The Council has published a main issues report as the first key stage in the process of producing a new local development plan for Glasgow. The new plan will help inform the decisions taken on where development should and should not happen, how new development interacts with its surroundings, and how we can protect and enhance the city's natural and built environments. A number of influences have shaped the form and content of the Main Issues Report. The Main Issues Report is, itself, a requirement of the new planning legislation in the form of the Planning Etc. Scotland Act 2006. This legislation means that the way in which the new plan is produced will be quite different from that involved in producing City Plan 2. It also means that the new local development plan will be shorter and more map based. The main issues report is accompanied by and has been influenced by a strategic environmental assessment of its contents and a City Plan 2 monitoring report. Both of these documents are also being made available for comment. The content of the Main Issues Report reflects the major changes in legislation, guidance and economic circumstances which have taken place in recent years. Some of the key influences include The publication of the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009, which requires the Council to act in the way best calculated to reduce Scotland's emissions of greenhouse gases by 80% by 2050. The effects of the economic downturn on development resulting in, for example, a growth in vacant and derelict land. The publication by the Scottish Government of new planning policy and the publication of the second national planning framework. The Main Issues Report is the first key public consultation stage in the production of the Local Development Plan. It is not a draft version of the plan, but focuses on the key changes that have occurred since the preparation of City Plan 2, and identifies the main issues that the plan itself will have to address. We hope that you can find time to have a look at the Main Issues Report, and let us know what you think. The key issues being consulted on are considered under six main themes. The first theme, the sustainable use of resources, considers how to plan for the prudent and sustainable use of natural and other resources, including land, energy, water, waste and existing built infrastructure. Issues examined in the main issues report include the demand for private housing development and whether it can be accommodated on brownfield rather than greenfield land. The potential for wind and biomass installations in the city as a means of delivering renewable energy and alternative uses for vacant and derelict land during the economic downturn. The main issues report's second theme, a sustainable strong economy, examines how the plan can enhance the city's attractiveness and accessibility and provide a range of effective and accessible employment locations. Issues examined in the Main Issues Report include Maintaining the role and function of the city centre as the heart of the west of Scotland Whether new superstores, with the exception of those already with planning consent, should be permitted out with town centres and whether some of the less successful sites currently designated for industrial and business use could be better used for alternative purposes. The third theme, Sustainable Strong Communities, looks at how the plan can help deliver enhanced living environments and life opportunities. Issues examined in the main issues report include Guidance on how the Council will engage effectively with local communities on forward planning documents for their areas and projected need for affordable housing and potential means of delivering it in the current financial circumstances. The fourth theme, Sustainable Connections, considers how to reduce the need to travel and promote more active travel by foot and bicycle, whilst helping realise opportunities for the regeneration and economic development. Amongst other things it looks at, how to work with SBT, Transport Scotland and others to identify and deliver a modern, high-quality public transport system for the city. 
options for a high-speed rail terminus and approach lines, and the provision of car parking in the city centre. The fifth theme, a sustainable environment, looks at how to protect and enhance natural and historic features to increase the city's attractiveness and help promote biodiversity. Flood protection, recreation and active travel. Issues examined in the main issues report include the potential for new and extended conservation areas and how best to protect and promote integrated habitat networks to safeguard and enhance biodiversity. The final theme, Sustainable Design, examines the role which good design can play in delivering distinctive, high-quality, healthy places, helping reduce greenhouse gas emissions and promote increased social interaction and activity. Issues examined in the main issues report include new residential parking guidelines and reducing the need for energy in new developments. The main issues are accompanied by a preferred spatial strategy which sets out on three maps the key spatial elements which the Council considers should form the basis of the new plan, as well as those elements emerging from consideration of the main issues. These include proposals identified in the National Planning Framework and the Strategic Development Plan, which is being prepared for the Glasgow Conurbation, and City Plan 2 proposals and policies which the Council considers should be retained. The preferred spatial strategy can be described as one of renewal and regeneration, but with an enhanced emphasis on sustainable development, health, addressing climate change and placemaking. Finally, the main issues report sets out how the policies currently included in City Plan 2 may evolve in response to the main issues identified and the requirements of the new legislation. The Council's intention is that the proposed Local Development Plan will meet Scottish Government guidance by being a succinct document. As a result, the policy content of the proposed plan will centre on a limited number of key policies. These will, in turn, be supported by more detailed supplementary guidance. Whilst the supplementary guidance will not be part of the Local Development Plan itself, it will, along with the Local Development Plan and Strategic Development Plan, form part of the overall development plan against which planning applications require to be considered. Supplementary guidance will also be subject to public consultation. The public consultation is scheduled to run for 10 weeks from 3rd of October until 12th of December. Over 800 emails or letters have been sent to a wide variety of individuals, bodies and companies, including community councils, housing associations, local amenity groups and developers such as house builders, notifying them of the start of the consultation period. The consultation documents have been made available to view on the Council's website, in all local libraries and at the Offices of Development and Regeneration Services 229 George Street. A number of consultation events are also to take place, including a community group drop-in session. Comments received during the consultation will be considered by the Council in drafting a proposed plan, scheduled for November 2012. Any objections received to the proposed plan will be considered by Scottish Government reporters at an examination anticipated to take place in the summer of 2013. And the reporter's examination conclusions will require to be taken and addressed before the new local development plan can be adopted and City Plan 2 replaced sometime in the summer of 2014.